Hey everybody, welcome back to Experience Points, a less formal, more laid-back sort of video series where I talk about games that I've played a little bit of, but have not yet finished. And today, I'm taking a look at a little indie game called A Space for the Unbound. And this is an indie game that caught my eye a little while back during an episode of Hit Point uh, that visually just really struck uh, a, a nerve with me. It's, it's one of those games that I saw it and I knew that I really wanted to see more of what it had to offer. It feels... It looks very dreamlike, it feels very dreamlike. It's not the sort of game that I would typically cover here because it's not really an RPG in any way, but there's something about it that appealed to me on kind of a visceral level that uh, that I just knew I wanted to give it a shot. I think there is something in this game that could resonate for a lot of fans of RPG. There's something about this game that is very dreamlike in its presentation, very abstract in the way that it presents itself. And I think that there's something just inherently human about it that I I find a little bit haunting and, and fun and endearing. Of course, when I first saw the game, the visuals are what drew me in. And uh, I gotta say that this game so far, I've played about six hours of it. I think it's about an 11 hour game total. I have seen so many beautiful set pieces within this game. The animation is very fluid. Um, you know, it's not something that I would say is like, you know, incredible pixel art, you know, because we've we've seen some really awesome pixel art at this point. Uh, but I think that it does a really good job of conveying normal human movement, normal human emotions. So this game, I think, takes place, I want to say, in like the 90s. The game takes place in like a rural Indonesia area uh, that is just something about it feels very 90s anime something about it feels like a like almost like an indonesian haruhi suzumiya it's an adventure game not not an rpg not an action adventure there's no there is some combat now that i've mentioned it now that i think about it but it's not the sort of game that really has that as much of a focus it's really more about solving various puzzles really uh through interacting with items, finding out who needs what item, in this unique mechanic of the game called space diving. And space diving allows you to dive into the headspace of the people that you're trying to work with to help them overcome some mental struggle that they're working with. Like there, for instance, there's this baker who is struggling with, do they want to continue being a baker or do they want to start trying to work on other kinds of food? And you space dive into them and you can interact with the various chefs who are all competing in this, uh, you know, master chef style competition to, to become the best chef or whatever. And you can sort of influence the outcome of that by providing them with different ingredients to work with. And there's something peculiar going on. I want to say that this has some element of mystery going on to it. Uh, this whole dreamscape sort of thing where uh, these magical or, or supernatural abilities exist. I don't think it's providing me all of the information yet. There's this mystery going on uh, that I know that the protagonist, uh, Atma, is trying to kind of figure out. I'm a, I'm a few chapters in and things are going pretty, pretty crazy. It starts off very dreamlike, very otherworldly. I, I don't know quite how to put it into words, but but eventually things sort of shift a little bit and things sort of go off the rails in a very unsettling fashion and it becomes sort of nightmare-like at, at a certain point in the game and i'm very curious how everything is going to resolve itself if it's going to resolve itself because this game does have this air of melancholy to it i think that this game is trying to tell a very interesting and, and artful story it feels very abstract as I'm playing through it though. And I think that that's something that's not going to appeal to some people, but if you're okay with games that uh, use metaphor like and present it in a literal way, if, if you know what I'm talking about, then this is the sort of thing that I couldn't recommend highly enough, especially considering that it's only about 20 bucks for, a, for an 11 hour experience with this gorgeous visual aesthetic it's such a unique setting and there's something about it that's just really drawing me into it. And in, in addition to like helping people solving their problems, there's also these sort of collectibles that you can do to cross off your bucket list, you know, like collecting all of the, the letters in a gum wrapper thing. I don't know why he wants to do it, but he wants to do it. And he also wants to build up a bottle cap collection so you can help him do that. Uh, 
and and pet all the the cats in the game it's the weirdest thing but but you you can do these things you can find these little collectibles as you're making your way through the game and uncovering this story that centers around three main people up to this point for me uh, that is atma who is the hero who is you know in the prologue and uh he's in the prologue he's with this girl called uh nirmala i want to say which is um you know this is really kind of cute story that ends on a bit of a cliffhanger and then the the scene sort of shifts and it then centers uh, on atma and this girl called raya who has this i don't know i don't want to spoil it too much it's it's almost better if you kind of go in a little bit blind but just know that there's some supernaturalness going on throughout the whole of this it feels dreamlike it feels storybook like at sometimes it feels nightmarish at other times uh it leads the whole game leads with this disclaimer that you know it deals with things like abuse and and heavy subjects and you know just so i'll include a little disclaimer here if that's the sort of thing that you know might you know dissuade you from playing it you know keep that in mind uh but if you have some time to just try something else this might be a really good palette cleanser between other games something that uh, can can maybe reground you something that is emotionally charged but if you're too much of a tough guy to enjoy something like that maybe this is not the game for you this tackles interesting topics in in a really unique way things like masculinity and and what it means to to be a good boyfriend even some of it's a little on the nose some of it's a little ham-fisted but it's all kind of done in this really dreamlike quality that makes it feel okay because because i think we're kind of used to dreams being somewhat metaphorical of real life or sometimes ham-fisted like there's something about the way that it approaches some of these subjects and resolving these subjects through metaphor it lends itself to the overall theme of the game i guess so far i normally don't continue playing games after i've made these videos this one I might actually play through to completion though because it's only a few more hours than what I've already put in but I knew I didn't need any additional footage for the video because of spoilers I want to avoid you know any late game stuff but man this game has it's a slow burn but at this point it's kind of got me hooked and I kind of want to see where it goes so if you're looking for something really just off the wall compared to what I've normally been doing but something that still provides on that storyline and characterization Maybe check out a space for the Unbound. It's cheap, it's short, and uh, it's beautiful. And it sounds really nice too. Really beautiful music is included in there. But that is about it for me for today. So I'm Super Derek. This has been Experience Points, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.